God is good. All the time. And all the time. That was good. That was excellent, Wendy. You put a lot of time into picking the pictures. That was that was a great touch. Not uh, just having the scripture up there for everyone to follow along with, but the uh, but the the pictures on. I appreciate that. That was really good. That was really good. I want to start off by telling you a couple of stories from my youth to make the point of superstition. I'm talking about things that are superstitious. My earliest childhood memories with my parents, uh, some of them revolve around, uh, I think it was a 70 or a 72 Ford pickup my dad bought brand new. And it was a four-door crew cab. And in fact, it was the only one that the dealer had. And so when people wanted to see one, to test drive it or to see if they were interested in buying one, the Fair Oaks, yeah, Fair Oaks Ford dealership would send people to our house. It was a big maroon pickup, and I remember as a kid, we used to go get hay, and uh, we'd stack, fill up the bed, and then kind of let the hay come over the sides of the bed so that we could get up even higher, and I swear we had those square bales stacked 20 feet. Uh, it was just, it was crazy, but one of the things that I will never forget about that truck is if we were driving, particularly at night, if a black cat crossed in front of our path, do you know what my dad would do? What, Crystal? Turn around the other way. No, he didn't turn around and go the other way. He would make an X in the corner of the windshield. Have you ever heard of that before? This, Crystal's heard of it. Rob, you've heard of it. It's the craziest thing. And so that was to protect him from bad luck because, you know, a cat crossed. Now, my dad would make fun of people who were superstitious. He, he was not superstitious, but he would make that X in the windshield to, to protect him from whatever bad luck that it was. Um, another story, when I was a teenager, I was uh, 18 or 19, I was working for this guy named Bill Osterello. And this is probably the strangest occurrence of someone practicing something superstitious that I've ever, I've never seen before. It was probably one of the strangest things. But we were working concrete, and so if you know much about the construction of a home, you have something that's called a footer, and your foundation sits on that, and then it comes up. But we were doing footers and foundations, and we were doing a home for a family that was moving over from Asia. I, I can't remember if, if they were um, Thailand or from China or from Korea. I just remember that they were Asian. And so after we had the footers done, and, and we had set the forms, and we were getting ready to pour the foundation. This Asian family came out to the side. And no joke, they brought a bag full of gold and silver coins from their own country. And they stood up on the bank, and they threw these coins down into where the bottom of the footer was and the walls were there. And I guess the, the reason I remember is because Bill Ostrello came to me personally. We called him Ozzy and said, don't touch those coins, boy. I was, like, I was scared. I was scared to death of him. Uh, so I, I didn't touch them. Um, but they thought that that would bring fortune and prosperity to their home. <clears throat> All right, now away from the personal stories. Have you ever heard the phrase, knock on wood? Do you know where that comes from? It's just mere, a mere speculation, a casket. I don't know. No, it's not a casket. So, so you've, you've heard people use that term. Well, you know, I'm going to go see the ball game. I hope my team wins. Knock out wood, right? Um, or whatever it is, you know, people. Well, where it comes from originally were uh, the, the concepts that these tree nymphs, uh, these spirits, these fairy like creatures, lived inside the trees. And so. Old, old, I'm talking, you know, three, four thousand years ago, the idea was you could knock on the tree to get their attention to make a, a request. You know, I want something good to happen. And so you're going to these tree fairies, these tree gods. Now, it evolved over time to say, I don't want to tempt fate. And so it came to be, I'm going to knock on the tree so that they can't hear what I'm talking about. So I'm going to make plans. Okay. We're going to go and we're going to go to this town and we're going to do this activity and we're going to do this and, and I want all those things to work out. So I'm making a noise so that the tree spirit couldn't hear what my plans were so they couldn't thwart 
my plans. And we use that type of language all the time in our culture. Now here's one that may hit home with you. Last night, maybe history was made. At 10.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they drew the what? Powerball. Now, I say that to say at the end of the service, we're going to have an altar call for everyone who bought tickets. <laughs> Unless you already agreed in your heart to tithe 10% of that, then you don't have to respond. Huh? <laughs> All right. You know, you hear on the news, you're, you're driving in the car, you know, 700 million, 800 million, 900 million, could hit a billion, and already you start daydreaming how you're going to spend that money, don't you? Look at Nick. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, but everyone's going to work tomorrow morning, as far as I know, right? Because uh, you sure wouldn't be here if you won. You'd be hiding somewhere, I guess, <laughs> with that ticket in the corner, hoping that no one finds you. How do people pick those numbers? I know a lot of people have some type of weird, I don't know. I, I, well, I, I love Chinese food, and whenever I open that fortune cookie, there's always what on the back of it. But I'm getting auto number, right? You know, I, I don't know how they come up with it, but you know, you've got some ritual, some superstitious way where you say, "I'm going to come up with, the, I'm going to write down my kids' birthdays or whatever it is." All right. So, what's this all have to do with us? Number one, let me say this: if you allow superstition to influence your life, you're not trusting God and following Him as much as you could. All right. Let, let me just say that simply. But number two, and more. To the point, many skeptics, agnostics, atheists, unbelievers have the perception that Christianity is just a superstition. That we're following a, a superstitious path that was laid out 2,000 years ago. And we don't really have logic, reason, and we're, we're, we're stupid, backwards people. Can we pull up the definition of superstition, please? All right, I got this off of dictionary.com. Made a screenshot of it. Uh, in case you're wondering, well, what, what is superstition? I thought this was pretty in-depth here. Uh, it's a noun. It's a belief or notion not based on reason or knowledge or in the um, ominous significance of a particular thing. Circumstance, occurrence, proceeding, or the like. Number two, a system or collection of such beliefs. Number three, a custom or act based on such a belief. <laughs> Look at number four. Irrational fear of what is unknown or mysterious, especially what? <laughs> In connection with religion. <laughs> Time out on that. I went to Wikipedia. One of the first things on superstition, I know that's not the best source of knowledge. It's no Encyclopedia Britannica. But one of the first things in the paragraph. Um, such as Christian tradition. Um, and, and then any blindly accepted belief or notion. Thank you very much, Wendy. If you want, you can, you can black it out. So there's superstition. So I believe this to be true. The atheists and the skeptics in our circle of influence deserve an answer on why the Christian faith is legitimate and is not a superstition. I mean, some of us have people in our homes or that we work with or who are close friends who they just don't have any interest in Christianity because it's just superstition. So I chose Genesis 1, and thank you, I knew it was a long reading, I appreciate that. I chose that because Genesis 1, although Genesis is not the first book written in the Bible, but the Job is actually the oldest one, it, it sets the tone for our understanding. Uh, the three key subjects, God, humanity and nature. And here's what's important. In the book of Genesis, there's a clear distinction that's made between God as, as deity, uh, humanity as thinking, spiritual, real people, and nature, animals, land, sea, and all of that. So there's a great distinction there. Um, and, and we could spend uh, weeks in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, but I think instead of going verse by verse, I'll, I'll trust the scripture reading that Wendy gave for us. And that you'll catch those points there, the distinction. And, and, and particularly this, all right? In superstitious uh, faiths, you know, in, in the idea of trusting superstition, 
There is a lot of chaos in the world around us, and so that's why you have to trust in those superstitions to protect you from the chaos. What's one thing we notice about God in creation? He undoes chaos. He brings order. He brings stability to that. All right. So, Christians, which I, I want to defend the idea, we're not a superstitious faith. But I'm going to say, although Christianity is not a superstition, that does not mean that Christians are immune to being superstitious. Uh, let me make sure I've got the term right here. I, I looked this up online. Allomancy. How many people have ever heard of the term allomancy? Ever practiced it? All right. It's, it's, it's about throwing salt over your shoulder. Now, when we lived in Illinois, many, 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 many moons ago, there was a family uh, in, in the church where we were at. And we would go out for lunch after church, and if, if the wife spilled salt on the table, you know what she did? Threw it over her shoulder. Yeah, because she want bad luck. Hello? <laughs> Christianity is not a superstition, but we're not immune to being superstitious. The term, cross your fingers, for what? Good luck. Do you know where that originates from? It's the sign of the cross. And people would do it behind their back, back in medieval times. You know, they didn't want infidels or whatever to see them. And so they'd make the sign of the cross, and they would put it behind their back. How many times have you ever done that? Or known someone, oh boy, I really hope my football team wins, or I get that job, or I get that promotion, or whatever. Um, I'll tell you what I see working in concrete. I see this all the time. I mean, it's crazy. So we'll be on the job, and we'll be working, and uh, so I'll have my pocket knife, right? And uh, one of my friends at work makes fun of me because I have a Swiss Army knife. He's like, I'll give them to my grandbaby. I said, well, it comes in really handy. So we'll be cutting like a vapor barrier. That's the plastic that goes down on the floor under your concrete slab. And uh, I'll, I'll be in a corner, and, and I'll, be, I'll be cutting a piece of plastic, or you'll be cutting whatever. And the guy next to me, he'll need the knife. So I'll hand it to him so he can cut something. And Robbie, you, I see you nodding. You probably know what I'm getting ready to say. They won't fold it back before they hand it to me. Why? Huh? It's bad luck. Thank you. Everybody knows it. I don't do that. I don't care. But most folks, you sound like you're defending it. <laughs> I've seen people that's really asking about not doing it. They don't, don't, don't do that. You take it back. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And these are Bible-believing people. They they claim to be Christians, right? I'm not, I'm not doubting their salvation. I'm, I'm just I'll give you an example. We're not a superstition, but we're not immune to superstitious notions. So so here's the big takeaway for today. Here's, here's where I'm trying to go. The, the reasons why we are not just gullible, irrational people that have fallen for this 2,000-year-old superstition. So if you're a note-taker, number one, the Christian faith doesn't use items like amulets or magic charms or talisman or, or any type of uh, good, good luck piece to ward off, and this is super important, to ward off pain, suffering, or evil. And you hold on to that thought. And I know that... The Latiers are thinking, but what about the rosary? I don't know. Um, Catholics. Catholic. Catholic. Well, and you guys grew up Catholic? I was sprinkled as a Catholic baby. My mom attends the Catholic church. Um, so I don't know that that really counts as, as a good luck charm. But but I, I saw you guys nod. So I, I bet that's they what they're thinking. Medals, too. Uh, medals. Uh, they wear medals. medals like St. Christopher. Uh, yes. Yeah, but medallions. Yeah, for the traveling guy, St. Christopher. Yeah, see, I knew that. Uh, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> have you ever noticed that the lucky rabbit's foot wasn't so lucky for the rabbit? <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so we don't use those magic charms, and listen to me carefully, to ward off pain, suffering, or evil. That's a huge part of being superstitious. I, I, I want to protect myself from pain, <coughs> suffering, and evil, so don't... Don't forget that part. Secondly, so number one, we don't use talisman, amulets, lucky rabbit's feet, stuff like that. Number two, biblical faith rejects 
superstitious activity even more so than secular people. If you have your Bible or your smartphone app for your Bible, I, I want to read a couple of verses from Deuteronomy chapter 18. I think this is really vital uh, to get some insight into, you know, does, does the Bible really reject superstitious activity or, or does it embrace it? And so I'm going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 18 and I'm going to begin in verse 10. You know, Dale Carnegie said there's nothing more magical to a man than to hear his name spoken and how to win friends and influence people. There's really nothing more magical for a preacher than to hear Bibles turning. Because when you're on your phone, I don't know, are they on Facebook? Or looking at the Bible? All right. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and beginning in verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. So that's like to appease these. Barbaric gods. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless, verse 13 says, before the Lord your God. For these nations, which you are about to dispose, listen to fortune tellers and Oprah. Wait, no, didn't say Oprah. <laughs> listen to fortune tellers and to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. So if you're buying into that psychic hotline, if you're buying into palm reading, if you're buying into, hey, you know what? Let's have a cup of tea because I'm going to read your tea leaves in the bottom. And you're not trusting in the video. It's not appropriate attitude or behavior for Christian church. So number one, we don't use talismans. Number two, uh, biblical faith rejects superstitious activity. And number next, our faith is built on a personal relationship with a personal God who personally wants to be known and make his will known. In superstition, there's no personal connection. I'm going to knock on wood. I'm going to avoid walking under the ladder. I'm going to not pull up that knife. I'm going to make the X on the windshield, whatever. I want to avoid pain, suffering, and disaster through these type of manipulations and superstition. And biblical faith says, no, we have a personal relationship. There's an actual God who knows us by name and who wants to be known by us. Number next, unlike superstition, the Christian faith makes a huge distinction, just like we saw in Genesis 1, between God, nature, and people. And in superstitious realms, those areas blur. There is no clear distinction. And, and now for the one that's really hard. Because I really feel like many Christians use prayer as a magic charm. We're not superstitious people, and our prayer life is not like being protected in a superstitious fashion. You know, I'm not just knocking on wood, I'm not just crossing my fingers, and, and here's why, and I thought long and hard about this this week. I'm, I'm trying to imagine myself talking to someone who doesn't have a belief in God, and who thinks that Christians are just superstitious, and I want to think about prayer, and I could see a, a, a skeptical person saying, well, that's no different than being superstitious. That's no different than all those other practices. And I thought about it. And again, I'm back to this idea of superstitious people are trying to avoid pain and suffering and disaster. And you know, biblical prayer is not about self-preservation. Sometimes I think we throw out that a superstitious prayer. Boy, I hope I get that job. Or I hope when I'm Christmas shopping, there's a spot open for me at the mall when I try to park, right? Oh, you know, different things like that. And so my prayers are not about self-preservation. They're not about being self-centered. How do I know that? Because when I pray, I'm bringing other people before the throne. I'm praying for my sons to grow up and marry godly women. You know, I'm praying for New Song to be influential in the community. I'm praying for other people. I'm praying for other things other than just myself. So I bring others before the throne. Also, when I pray, I'm not just trying to avoid 
hey, I'm trying to seek God's direction. In prayer life, hopefully part of our prayer is to ask God for direction. All right, so that's not superstitious. Also, in my prayer life, you know, I'm praising God. I'm thanking God. I'm, I'm worshiping a real personal being. And that is not the same as superstition. And the final thing about prayer that really distinguishes it, I think, from a superstitious practice. I have a terrible dry throat. I apologize for, for drinking. Um, prayer is not about controlling God. See, if you're practicing a superstitious belief, you're trying to control the elements of nature around you. You're trying to control forces of evil. Remember that one? What's that from? Oh, wait, did it this way. <laughs> Where have I gone wrong? Fiddle around the roof. Remember when they thought something would be bad to keep the evil one away? You guys have got to see Fiddle around the roof. I know. I'm on the edge of insanity. But I'm not there yet. It's a great movie. Um, prayer is not about controlling God. Like all these other attempts to ward off evil and, and, and wickedness and the superstition. Prayer, bottom line at the end, is about submission to God. My heart needs to be moldable. I need to be in submission to God. All right, well, here's the bonus round on, on distinguishing faith from a biblical perspective from superstition. I believe that superstition is all about avoiding all harm to yourself as an individual. Here comes the really hard part. Distinguishing prayer from superstitious activity was hard. This one is really hard. The Bible never tries to portray a life that's immune to pain, to suffering, and consequences. I mentioned about 15 minutes ago that the oldest book in the Bible wasn't Genesis, but what, what did I say was the first written book? Job. Thank you. I'm glad you guys paid attention. Job. Have you ever read the book of Job? Oh, he's blameless. He's upright. There's no one on the face of the earth like him. Ha! Huh. Let me just put my finger on him. What will happen? He'll turn around and come curse you. Man, the book of Job is a guy who does everything right and experiences his cattle, his livestock are stolen, his children are killed. He gets all those boils and sores. Everybody turns their back on him. Where's your superstition there? All right, put that off to the side. How about the life of Jesus? Abandoned by all his friends in the garden that night. Beaten. Mocked. Crucified. Naked. Shamed. Publicly. That's not superstition. There's no protection there, is there? I'll give you one more verse. One that should keep you up at night once in a while. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. See, Christianity is not superstition. Christianity is not even in the realm of superstition. I think we've got... Several good reasons, I, I hope I laid out clearly, that distinguish us from superstition. So biblical Christianity shows that we're not, we're not sheltered from the reality of evil. We are not sheltered from the reality of, of evil, but instead we're led. In fact, I would, I would tag on, we are shepherded. We are shepherded by a God who is with us in the suffering, and he'll never abandon, and he'll never forsake us.